Max? Yes, sir. Hit the air eight siren. It's time for Monday morning fallout. Monday morning fallout, of course, when we overreact from to everything from the football weekend. And so, ah, let's get to overreacting. <laughs> and again, remember, it is not Monday, but we have to do it now because this is today is my Monday. Today is my Monday. Whatever, man. You ruin it for everyone. I know. Let's start with my three big thoughts. All right. Texas takeover. It was that. We've heard H-Town take over for the p- past two years, and it's lived up to the hype, of course. Uh, but it is now time to start considering the idea that Texas is taking over the football world. I'm fine with that. The Texas FBS teams go 10-2 and two in the opening week of college football, and one of those losses mm-hmm. was to another Texas yep. team. Yep. Only one team, Rice, lost to an out-of-state team. Yep. The rest of them? end up going 8-0, and 9-0. Mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. They end up going 9-0. and Yeah. Pretty darn impressive. Yeah. And there's uh, – and I think, basically with the exception of Rice, and we'll get to them in a moment, I think there's positives to take from, from every team in their wins. Right. Um, of course, the big, the big headliners, Houston goes and beats Oklahoma at NRG Stadium. And honestly – Houston, Houston was so very clearly the better team. I like I said, my one thing with that was I just felt like Herman would have them better prepared, and it was very clear it from was, the start that they had a plan that was much better. Tom than Tom Herman use. coached the pants off of Bob yeah. Stoops and Todd Orlando on the yes. defensive side. Oh my goodness, for sure, yeah, for sure. Um, they were so very clear the other the better team. If you want to squint and you want to say that UCLA is better than A and M, A and M just got the, mm-hmm. got the better of them on that day. I don't agree, but I can understand. It. Sure. If you want to squint and say Notre Dame is better than Texas, they just Texas just got the better of them on that day. Again, I don't agree, but you could argue that. Yeah. There's no argument for OU being better than Houston. There just isn't. They were Smoked the them. they were sp- yeah. so clearly the better team. They're that one stupid fumble away from almost doubling them up from just a, the goal line. Just a dominant, yeah. dominant performance yeah. from Houston, and all of a sudden the the talk is now, can they run the table? And we'll talk a lot more about that, but. I would argue the pressure's on now because oh, yeah. everybody's looking at them. Yep. Texas goes and last night, or Sunday night rather, um, gets a really, really fun win over Notre Dame uh, in, the, in double overtime. The offense looked like an entirely new team. Yep. Um, the, the pace of it was great. I thought Shane Bouchel was good. Yep. I don't necessarily understand the love fest going on. I thought that he was good. Yeah. Uh, it, I also looked, think his receivers didn't help him out. No, which his, was no, kind of amazing. His receivers. I mean, he. Don't get me wrong. Foreman's catch in the end zone. Wow, but, but there were there were you know, he's kicking a himself of, for the one he did. Draw. Number of catch yeah. a number of yeah. catches they should have made. Yeah. Um, I thought Shane Bouchel was good. I think it's a good start. I don't want this kid to get buried in expectations that then right. all of a sudden when he goes out there and looks like a freshman, which yeah. he will. Yeah, it's inevitable. When right. he goes out there and do does that, I don't want this Texas fan base just turn on him, right. which they are want to do. Yeah. But overall, a very impressive look for the mm-hmm. for the uh, new look Texas offense. Uh, can they sustain it? That remains to be seen. But great, great start to 2016. And Texas A&M beats UCLA uh, after trying to give it away six ways to Sunday. They they yeah. they were they were heading towards a Houston level domination. Yeah, they were heading towards it where there's just no questions. Yeah. Like they were the better team, yep. plain and simple, yeah. hard stop. Yeah. And then the fourth quarter happened, right. and A&M tried very very hard to give it away. Yeah. Um. They did not. They also up, the twelfth man started leaving early. Yeah. Like seven minute Weird. mark. Um, they on, end up. Man. They end up You're winning. That. They end up winning in overtime. Get a great defensive stop to win it. Uh, so overall, a great weekend of Texas college football. Yeah, Boy, man. we're gonna be late calling Wayne Condra. We um, are. I'll I'll speed this up. Six okay. A chaos continues. <laughs> uh, it is just for the second consecutive week the number one team in six A goes down. Westlake loses to a team from Nevada. Uh, we have a new number one. Uh, it is Desoto, mm-hmm. and I don't feel good about it. Uh, they looked yeah. great against Denton Geyer, but I don't. I now look at 6A in the same way that I look at 5A last year, where 5A was just this crazy just storm of, of every week things are going haywire. That's how I view 6A this year. Yeah. I, I, I just don't see a scenario. I don't see an undefeated state champion in 6A. Right. I just don't. I look at there, and, and I, don't, I don't see an undefeated state champion. Right. I think everyone's going to lose a game. It's entirely possible, for sure. So that's it. And then I want to run through 
Uh, we're now two weeks into the Texas High School football season. There's some very surprising 0 and 2 teams. Yeah. We start Spring Westfield 0 and 2. Yeah. Austin Vandegrift 0 and 2. Kerrville Tyvee, San Antonio's 0 and 2. Mm-hmm. Liberty Ilo is the one. They're 0 and 2, and they play Texas High this week. And there's a very real chance that Liberty Ilo starts 0 and 3. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Lorena in Central Texas is 0-2, and, and the, the more concerning thing is that they've only scored 24 points. The offense has just not gotten going for the Leopards. Mineola yeah, is 0-2. Mineola, a team we had ranked number number two, number one, one or number two number one. in our 3A yeah. Division One state uh, rankings, or t- Division two state yeah. rankings, and they are now, they're now 0-2. Remarkable. Hooks is 0 2. A team out in East Texas we had high hopes for. They start 0 2. And then South Texas, Falls City, the Beavers are 0 2. Rather, rather amazing. Three helmet stickers. Going to hand out some helmet stickers. I'm touching a helmet if you can't see. Um, Sikori Smith of Cameron Yo uh, went absolutely off. Um, had himself a night. He did in their win. Uh, he ends up going for uh, uh, six catches for 189 yards and five touchdowns receiving. And if that weren't enough, he also returned a kick for a touchdown. Yeah. Pretty nuts. He and Zach Andrus, quite a combination so far. Uh, I was really impressed, and I know, I know, I know, I know, it's from a an F, against an FCS team. I was really impressed with Texas defense. Texas Tech's defense. Keenan Ward, the defensive back, is is the is the the star here. He has an interception. He held, brings in three uh, three tackles as well. A really kind of acrobatic interception as well. Mm-hmm. Very impressed by the Tech defense. But Keenan Ward gets my uh, helmet sticker. And then four pin Travis quarterback Amron Jeffrey also went off in this uh, in this one. He goes for he throws for four hundred fifty six yards and four touchdowns for Fort Ben Travis. Those are my helmet stickers. Three teams to watch: Bridge City mm-hmm. and the Cardinals are flying high. They look really really good right now. Um, the only thing I'm going to say is that they're going to get a great great test this week against West Orange Stark. Um, this is this is a, a Bridge City team where their running back Case Draper has has been great in the slot T attack. West Orange Stark has not been has not really faced no. a big test yet. Here comes their big test. Very excited to see, it. but Bridge City a team to watch. Texas State, the Bobs, party in the end zone, baby. Oh, man, I watched this whole thing. They go to Athens, Ohio, oh. and they as twenty one point underdogs. Yep, they beat Ohio in triple overtime. Fantastic win for Everett Withers. Couldn't be happier for him. Unbelievable game to watch. I, I said this to a lot of people on Twitter. It's a listless team last year fought their ass off mm-hmm. in Athens, and they got the reward. And they got the rewarded. I'm so happy for them. Watch out for Texas State. Yeah. Because if, they, if they're going to play like this every week, they're a bowl team. Yeah. Okay? If they play like this every week, they're a bowl team. And then Grapevine. Yeah. Grapevine absolutely demolished Abilene Cooper. Yeah. Really impressive win for Randy Jackson's Mustangs. Uh, definitely a team to watch. Three teams I'm worried about. Wascom. Yeah. Uh, down go the Wildcats. Yeah. We knew that they had a lot of kind of moving parts for yeah. this team, but they end up losing. Who they end up losing to? I can't remember. Oh, uh, Lord. Uh, Gilmer Harmony That's by right. a lot. By a lot. They got yeah. drubbed by Gilmer 62-26, Harmony. 62-26, I believe. That is a very concerning loss for Wascom. Um, very worried about them. The only team to lose to an out-of-state team, Rice. Yeah. And we talked about this on Friday. Uh, the pass defense does not look any better. No. And if the offense is just going to be average, they're in big, big trouble. You know, but in their defense, and I keep saying this, they're probably not going to play a better team, you know, in, in Conference USA all year than Western Kentucky. Mm-hmm. So it, there's you can only go up from there. Right. And then – Another team that I'm worried that I'm worried about after this week is South Grand Prairie. We we, we had very high hopes for South Grand Prairie basically because they have uh, they have a great um, uh, defense, but uh, things did not work out for them on Friday night. Uh, they end up taking their first loss of the year, and I'm waiting for the internet to pull up so that I can remember who it was. <laughs> uh, but this was a um, this is a, a team that that is in a very tough district to begin with, and if they're if they're starting to struggle offensively then things are not going to get any easier for them. So uh, South Grand Prairie is my team, is a team that I'm worried about. That's Monday right. morning fallout.